Hello everybody, welcome to a new video, James Speed Shop. Today will be a very interesting video about my SL24 V8 Turbo project. I'm going to dismantle the intake manifold and have a look if I can turn it 180 degrees. So if you're new to the channel, in the right corner of you my logo, you can click on it. Go to my main page, see all the other interesting videos and projects, reviews. And you can also have a look on my website, jamespeedshop.com. That's over here. So let's have a look. So intake manifold on an M113 V8, also on a six cylinder it would be almost the same. Uh, there's a little bit of difference in the compressor engine with this engine. Uh, that of course has a different intake manifold. So this intake manifold has a throttle body on the back. That is over here. You cannot really see it but it's over there. I want it over here, why? Because it's a shorter routing to my intercooler on the, on the bottom, the intake. So, I have seen some stuff that people dismantle it. I just want to know for sure if I can do it. Uh, it's holding with, I fought 10 bolts. Uh, so, 4 bolts on each side of the intake and one on the, on the, on the end. Uh, this EDR system needs to be, that's coming off, I think, with it. The fuel lines are connected to the intake manifold. There's one EGR valve on the back. I need to remove there are two small bolts in it. Uh, then you have the crankcase breather pipe that's over here. That needs to be removed. Yeah, we will see how it goes. I will put the camera on a nice position and uh, that you can see everything what I'm doing. So, that starts. Have a look if I can lift it. I don't think it's very stuck. Uh, so, two hoses on each side, just like the crankcase breeder, they go to the total body. I cannot remove this one. Have a look how that works. You got fuel lines. This is like a vacuum line. I think this is for the brake booster. Uh, vacuum line. So, you have only one fuel line going to the rail because it's a uh, non return fuel line. Um, I think everything should go off. Um, I got a vacuum, vacuum lines are loose, yeah. So we have a look if it's possible to lift it. So what I've done, I've cut this pipe. It's very hard to get it out of it because it's with an angle, with an angle downward. So I cut it. So I'm now going to try it again to lift it. So let's have a look. There is a small 
line connected in the bed here. Yeah. That's it. So intake manifold is off. Um, I just looked into the intake runners. Pretty pleased with it. You could see what what is very common thing that's very nice to show you now is that you could see that uh, the valve gasket, valve cover gasket on this side had a leak. You can see that because it's all very greasy over here. I already cleaned it uh, as much as possible. You can see it's already also ran into here. On this side it was in good condition because no oil here, it's only dirt. So this gasket shifted a little bit. I leave it like this because I first want to vacuum clean the intake runs. If you can see, what I'm very surprised about it is that they are very clean. Only the only first part of the intake runner is a little bit oily but that's pretty common if you look to there is an EGR system in it if you look to the valves they're very clean I'm pretty surprised there's not really any coal on it so it's very good because they get heavier so you could also see that there's not really an oil burn in it so um, the intake runners are clean so it's not that there has been a leaking uh, valve stem gasket or something so you can see here, on the, I don't know if you can see it, this is why you should be also very carefully, you should, I think you can see on the top valve there is some dirt on it that just fell into it, so that's why I should not move anything and first clean everything out of it, just to be sure. You can also see what I mean about that the knock sensors are in a very very nice place. So this is a very shitty job of course. So what I'm going to do with this, because there is just a an, an connector on these, I will move the cable out of it. So I will lengthen the cable and make another connector that's over here, so you can reach it. Uh, then you can always uh, disconnect them, because the wiring loom is connected in underneath the intake runner, so it's very bad, I think. So look all very good. I need to clean out the dirt, then uh, clean everything and then I put the gasket on it and if I look to it, then I think I can just turn it around. There's one thing that I see here that's maybe a thing that you can see here, there's also that channel from the, uh, that's also some kind of EGR system or recirculation system, that's this not going to use this, these sort of stuff, so there's a lot an extra thing. I will turn this over, clean it. Uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think they can be turned over without a problem. So let's have a go. So I've got these things also removed, one in one piece, the other one broke off. I don't really think it's a problem, but the bushing is in here, I think this also needs to be removed. 
um, because it's in a way when you turn over the the intake manifold I think but we shall see that I will put them on so I removed the uh, fuel rail uh, this stuff that's not connected this is like uh, there are flaps in the in the intake that work on vacuum they it's connected to one side and then the, there's a small the, the short routing and a long routing for it so uh, next is I'm going to put clean this a little bit and then try to put it on and have a look if it fits a little bit so we will shall we shall see so intake manifold is on the engine 180 degrees uh, fits pretty good as you can see I have four bolts in there on each side um, there is a problem of course here so this needs to be cut off completely as low as possible needs to be an adapter plate on here and then a small bend upwards and then the throttle body can be positioned again so this is the EGR uh, stuff that needs to be blanked off also I have to figure out something here because I have a hole in the block here also on this side to cover uh, cover it up uh, I think this hole is going nowhere I have to look into that but I think that's just an uh, open connection but I have to have, have to have a look otherwise it just needs also to be blanked off then on the back side there was the other piece of the EGR uh, I have to cut down a little bit out of the manifold here then I can make an adapter plate to cover this plate and on the other side is nothing <coughs> so that's it so um, yeah that's what needs to be figured out I think it will be all okay uh, so I have to figure out to get some plates for it to make a bracket for it so that's what I'm going to do next uh, sorting out stuff how to work it out and cover up the holes so it works all pretty good I'm going to do uh, there will be different injectors in this engine bigger of course I'm going to use the same fuel line Trust the body <laughs> needs to be re uh, needs to be replaced in a position that I can uh, use it uh, so that will be all good I think not not big problems so that will be all good so this is part one of the manifold. I first need to make some parts. So there will be a part two of uh, the modification, that sort of stuff. So uh, I think it will work out pretty good. Make some. I have to make some new points where we can lift off the engine. Uh, normally it's in the back, of course. Here, I think I make two connections on here. So I can lift it also from those bolts. Uh, and then I'm good. And I have four lifting points. So thanks for watching. So, if you like this video, put a thumbs up in the need of video. Uh, also, have a look at my website, jamespeacher.com. If there are any questions, leave the comments below the video for questions. If you want to see more in the right corner of you, is my logo. You can click on it, go to my main page. Um, so, thanks for watching. See you for the next one. Bye bye.